Hello, my name is Don Beringer. I'm an orthopedic surgeon and the chairman of surgery at the Medical Center of Central Georgia. Through our work on various quality initiatives, it is increasingly clear that the prevention of postoperative venous thromboembolism is among the highest priorities facing healthcare organizations and surgery centers today. Professional societies, the payers, and the government now consider DVT and pulmonary embolism preventable surgical complications whether the patients are hospitalized or in the outpatient environment. 30% of acute post-surgical deaths occur due to pulmonary embolism, and this complication accounts for 100,000 deaths in the United States alone. Many of these are attributable to post-operative events. There's an untold cost to patients and to their families related to rehospitalizations, lost productivity, and overall loss in quality of life related to DVT and PE. The direct cost of these complications is considered unacceptable, and financial penalties to providers for these events are rapidly becoming a part of the new value-driven reimbursement schemes. I can personally attest to the profound impact of this complication, having experienced a life-threatening, pulmonary embolism after an outpatient procedure, which may well have been prevented if I had used mechanical prophylaxis with or without short-term anticoagulation. While there are differences of opinion regarding the specific DVT prevention protocol, there's a growing consensus that individual patients need to be assessed for their risk of VTE after surgery, and healthcare organizations need to adopt a standard protocol for DVT prevention. Aside from early mobilization, Mechanical prophylaxis and anticoagulation comprise the two categories of DVT prevention. The most commonly used mechanical prophylaxis, intermittent pneumatic compression devices, or ICDs, have several advantages for a large segment of surgical patients. First, these devices can be applied at discharge for the home environment where DVT and PE most commonly occurs, at home after discharge. Second, mechanical prophylaxis is clearly an advantage when the risk of bleeding or other complications of chemoprophylaxis weighs heavily against the risk of DVT itself. Third, ICDs in combination with a single daily aspirin are effective in patients at moderate risk for VTE or in combination with other forms of chemoprophylaxis for the high-risk patient. Incorporating ICDs into the outpatient DVT prevention strategy will reduce unnecessary hospitalizations, a complicated recovery, and even the potential for mortality in a large volume of surgical patients, whether they're discharged from the hospital or the outpatient surgery environment. 